Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, probably one of the best Star Wars movies of all time. And at the end of episode 3, after Obi-Wan defeats Anakin on Mustafar, he takes his lightsaber leaving Vader without Sith's primary weapon. But as we all know, Vader obviously had a lightsaber and a new hope and other canon Star Wars projects. So how did he acquire this lightsaber? Well, the canon comic book Star Wars Darth Vader Dark Lord of the Sith Imperial Machine, which was written by Charles Soule, explains exactly that. But first, why don't we find out how a Sith gets their lightsaber? As Emperor Palpatine explains in his comic book, quote unquote, the crystal of any Jedi's lightsaber will do. As you know, the Kybers are alive. Like any living thing, they can feel pain. Through the dark side, you must pour your pain into it until it turns to a beautiful crimson. But first, Vader needs a lightsaber. And just as he says not long after talking to Palpatine, the saber of a Sith is not given, it's taken. But most of the Jedi are dead, so how will he find one? Well, Vader goes to a mid-room Jedi outpost where some clone troopers are designated to clean up the properties of the fallen Jedi. The clones don't know who Vader is and think he's a surviving Jedi when he enters the outpost. Vader actually finds an old Jedi's lightsaber and uses it against the clones, but he doesn't keep it as he did not take it from a Jedi. Eventually, Vader searches the outpost archives for any Jedi who took the Barish Vow before the Purge. The Barish Vow was an oath taken by Jedi who kept from all Jedi Order activities, and they would pretty much completely isolate themselves from the Jedi Order, so this would be perfect for finding any surviving Jedi. He finds a Jedi named Kirak Infila. With this information, Vader heads to the river moon of Al Dolin. As Vader lands on the moon, Kirak senses his dark presence and sets up some defenses. When they finally meet, Kirak tells Vader to find him on the top of a sacred mountain called Pass Val, where he had set up some traps. As Vader begins to make up the mountain, he is attacked by some sort of Star Wars eagle on a very sketchy bridge. And when Kirak has the chance to blow the bridge, he doesn't, purely out of his curiosity of what and who Vader is. Because of course, he imagined he was a Sith, but Vader didn't have a lightsaber, so he lets them reach the top where they duel it out until Vader gets force pushed off the cliff and was then believed to be dead by Kirak, but Vader survived. Kirak then goes on to look for Vader's master as he is sure that Vader was too weak to be a master. While waiting for a mechanic to get his ship ready, Kirak senses Vader's presence once again. Quote unquote, no, it's not possible. And to his surprise, he walks outside and sees that Vader has followed him. Kirak and Vader have one last battle, but this time Kirak had a weakness. Vader begins to use the force to destroy a water tank that was in the middle of town. This distracts Kirak and allows Vader to get him into a chokehold. After killing the town and Kirak, Vader then goes to Mustafar with Kirak's lightsaber to complete his mission. Palpatine tells Vader through a transmission to find the place where the dark side calls to him. Vader finds this place and begins to pour his pain into the kyber crystal. Things get intense and then Vader starts to have a vision. In this vision, he fails to turn his lightsaber red and goes back to Coruscant and shows Palpatine. They then have a fight which Vader wins killing Palpatine. He then goes back to Obi-Wan and begs him to forgive him. This vision motivates Vader to not give up. His life flashes before his eyes, then it cuts to Coruscant. Vader enters Palpatine's office and shows him his new lightsaber. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, comment what you think of this, and subscribe if you want to see more.